week's episode of Two Guys and Some Horror, we talk about a movie that has a series of unfortunate events, or is it just a series of misunderstandings in Tucker and Dale versus Evil? I'm joined this week, as always, by our best host, Clark. How you doing, buddy? I, I'm doing I'm doing great, and I really appreciate your lie of a compliment there. But um, we all know you're the best host, and... Anyhow, moving off of these uh, compliments, let's talk a little bit about the uh, a friendship that's that's almost as good as ours between Tucker and Dale. Let's let's kind of dive into this. Heck yeah! Uh, let's now, see. This is, so, go ahead. I was going to say this is your second time of, of watching this movie, right? Yes. And what are your thoughts? Uh, so for me, it's I mean it's it's very funny. Um, I think they had solid audio throughout, like music and whatnot, to help set the tone. It's not too serious. It's not too funny. Um, I, I don't know. I just think it's a really good movie. I think it's just a really decent, you know, comedy horror. It's not as good as Shaun of the Dead, that's for sure. But it's close. I wonder. So I wonder if there's a cut of this film out there where they cut out all of Tucker and Dale's perspective of the film and cut it in such a way where it looks like they're the killers. Oh my gosh. How much, how much more fun could that be? I way more serious. I really want to see that. Yeah. They let you know pretty early in the movie that the main two characters are not serial killers whatsoever, except for like the very beginning. (laughs) when you kind of see them and they play like that creepy music and he's just staring at the girls. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, but, uh, I think that would be a lot of fun, especially uh, just from the college kids, you know, point of view or whatnot. I think that would be really, really cool to see. Yeah. Um, well, do you, do you have a quick review this week? I honestly, no, I, I don't, I think we're just going to have to discuss this movie because this is a lot of fun. This Perfect. is its own, own thing. One hundred percent. This is a bromance film, where kind of a bromance leads to a man falling in love with someone, and succeeding, you know. And you know, there's some murders and just random crazy shit happening in this film. I would agree. I think the series of miss, maybe if we take it from a series of misfortunate events, uh, really helps lay for me like most of my favorite parts of this movie. You know, you have uh, two two rednecks uh, who are just heading out to, to their vacation home. Like, I'm already sold. This is awesome. They These two guys who are just, they probably don't have too much money to their name kind of a situation or too many belongings or, or you know, objects, whatever. Somehow right. save up enough money to scrap together to buy this cabin. And I think that that right there is a great story in itself because we get a lot of horror films with cabins that turn out really bad Mm -hmm. but this one this one's a little different they're just heading up there for the nice weekend of fish and i really i really enjoyed that part that we already get to meet two lovable characters uh who are just wanting to go fix up their cabin their vacation home uh well you meet we meet the teenagers before we meet them and you get all the stereotypes you get the dumb blonde. You get the uh, the virgin main character. This is kind of like, you know, the Cabin in the Woods cast. You have the stoner. You have the uptight kid. You have the jock who's doesn't really look like a jock at all. He's just kind of a douche. Yeah, I just called him douchey college kid for a while until I realized then, his name was Chad. <laughs> then you have the one character. Yeah, no, it is definitely this is a good use of the name. Then you have the, uh, the standard stereotypical black character and the uh, the random girl the best friend female character and then there was that one guy who kind of I guess he, the stoner character was kind of the guy who was down to earth yeah he's, like, he's probably the closest them. yeah yeah but he was the one that ran into the tree so I <sighs> Yeah, uh, for those for those of you who have not seen this film, I highly recommend it. Because uh, anyhow, the premise of this movie is like like Curtis said, these guys have a nice vacation and just teenagers just start killing themselves in front of them, 
And one of the teenagers decides to go on a murderous rampage after that. Which all makes sense by the end of the movie. So I just, I think that's one of the favorite, like my favorite pieces uh, to the story, at least, is uh, this main, you know, this main character has this bit in him that you don't understand, um, but you learn about it throughout and you get more and more pieces from him about it. And then finally at the end, it all makes sense, you know, why the, he's so the nuts. Realization. Yeah, yeah, he is half of the thing he hates. Oh, which is so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So... Uh, no, I, I loved it. So everything kind of kind of falls back in place, too. Like, the writing's very well done. Like, the police officer pulls them over, and they're like, hide the beer, hide the beer. Okay, okay. Like, Dale ducks down to try and help clean up the mess, and then he ends up looking like he's giving Tucker a blowjob when they get pulled over. Dude, I thought was that was great. Calm 100% bold. great. And like the officer's just kind of looking at him funny. And he's like, you know why I pulled you over? He had a broken turn signal. Fix it. But then there's like that long, dramatic pause of like eeriness from the cop. That almost makes you think like he's going to be a bad guy. Like, a you know, the killer maybe. The or, I don't know. Yeah. Kind of weird. Well, well the... The best part about this movie is there is no killer until, until like, at a certain point after all the deaths. Right. And I think he just lost his stuff. Like, he he was, like, Lord of the, uh, Lord of the Flying everything. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with what he's kind of saying there, if it was actually that, that situation. You know, there is no law. We have to protect ourselves. It's, it's us versus them. What he's saying isn't wrong if you're actually put into that situation. He wasn't. They completely misread everything that was happening. They, you know, the, the poor guys, they, weren't, they didn't kidnap uh, uh, Allie, right? She slipped and fell off the rock when all the college kids were going skinny dipping. She slipped and fell off the rock, and, and Dale rescued her. He literally dove into sure. the water, brought her out, and saved her. But they let's, completely let's, misread. Let's explain it. that scene for the audience too. Sure. Like, uh, yeah. so Tucker and Dell, you know, they're out, they're on their boats fishing, and then they see topless, you see the, the big boob blonde walking into the water, and he's like, he's like they don't want to. And Tucker's like, hey, I want to, I want to check this out. And Dale's like, no, don't, they don't, they don't want to see see you. And he's like, well, I kind of want to see them. Yeah. And then you... they see the girl on the rocks, Allie, who you just mentioned. Like what you said, like she falls, hits her head, and Dell saves her. Yeah, Dale jumps in. back to their place. He's a hero. And we got your friend, and they took it as a threat. <laughs> oh, my God. That we was... got your friend. <laughs> and then now later on, he carves it in the, in the wood again with the axe. We yeah, got Yeah, yeah, we your got your friend. friend. It's all misspelled and everything. It looks all <laughs> foreboding. <laughs> So, do you know what he's from, by the way, Tyler Labine? Alan Tudyk. Tyler Bodine, or yeah, are Dale. you talking about Dale? Yeah. He so was that... in uh, Planet of the Apes. He played a scientist. He's mm -hmm. been in quite a few things. I I can't really think of anything else off the top of my head beyond Planet of the Apes. But so no, not I'm, to I'm take us his. not to take us too down like too deep down a rabbit hole. I feel like we do that a lot with IMDb. We because you can go some of these you can go nights and nights and nights just scrolling through stuff. Well, you could do both of the main actors. I mean, Alan Tudyk too. He was in Serenity. He was in uh, he was in Frasier for an episode. He, the, that guy has a long-lasting career. One of my favorite I mean, shows that Dale's character was in was Reaper, yeah. um, which I've got canceled unfortunately way too soon. But it ran from 07 to 09 on the WB. Um, listeners, if if you don't like anything I've ever said before. I promise you'll like the show. It's amazing. He did it just before this movie. Um, and then for Alan Tudyk, like you were saying, he's been in a lot of stuff. I The thing that always comes to mind to me is, you know, he's the face behind Clay, or the voice behind Clayface in the new Harley Quinn TV series and the Joker. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Like, it's awesome. Um, but he was in A Knight's Tale with Heath Ledger. I'm a huge Ledger he fan. Was. So that was really cool to see that um, he was in this as well. 
Oh, but yeah, see, so to try and fame right there. try and get us back, that might have been. Um, well, the, the heroine also, who the girl plays Allie, she's in Thirty Rock, and she kind of plays the bitchy intern. See, I don't um, know her as well as the other two. Yeah, that's interesting. But um, every everyone in this film is pretty. They're 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 pretty decent actors. I think. I don't know if this movie got a theatrical release or not, but I I feel it was an indie film. It feels it has an indie feel. Um, it has an opening weekend though, which makes me think that it did have a small theater release, maybe. And yeah, it's, I don't know. It's I, gross. I've never is pretty seen small it, too. So I didn't hear of this, and I saw it like several years ago, like in 2016. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's see what. It's a Canadian film. That's why. Um, if I went and did a fact fun fact and trivia about our podcast we talk more about canadian films than we talk about any other country's films you know what i'm i'm not gonna lie canadians so a lot of the canadian films that we've seen are pretty decent but yep. like maybe we, we'll we'll I, when we watch gate that probably or gate two that probably won't be the same situation but <laughs> you know yeah, I think this got a very limited release with a gross of fifty two thousand man. Yeah. There's no there's no way this was out for, for too long. No, and what's weird um, is I mean so so the director, Eli Craig, who's also the writer, half mm-hmm. of the writing team with Morgan Jurgensen, they do this in two thousand ten and then really nothing else. He gets a little bit in twenty thirteen, um, Mr. Craig. With Zombieland, the TV movie, but that doesn't really pan out. And then he does Little Evil on Netflix, which ends up being a pretty, pretty big movie for him on Netflix in 2017. Mm-hmm. But that's it. He's got nothing else to his name, and I think he he's done a great job with the things that I've seen that he's done. So I don't I don't get it. Um, I don't get it. But Morgan Jurgensen, the other writer, doesn't have a whole lot to his name. So there's it's, you know hit or miss. I guess you catch a break, you might. You might get a good job. You might not. You never know. Mm. So one of my favorite scenes in the movie is with Chad the douche. They're outside Tucker and Dale's cabin after Allison has been rescued. It's like the next morning. And this is their first attempt to go see what these rednecks are doing with the, with the girl, right? They, they, Mm -hmm. so for the listeners, the college kids are out spring break partying Tucker and Dale vacation home. They're just trying to fix up the place and fish and drink beer and have a good time. The college and kids... all the news case. This this place, by the way. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I, I can bump in with this later if you want. Sorry for interrupting. No, you're perfect. I think you're going. But with the per, with but the perfect place, story, place yeah. that they bought is actually it, they they allude to this pretty heavily. Belong to like this hillbilly murderer that is related to the douchey kid, which he, that's his his reason for hating hillbillies is. It, because his dad was killed by one. Um, so he says. Yes. So uh, actually, he gives a great breakdown of the Memorial Day massacre from these rednecks. Who... That was. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. that hillbilly's house because there's like bones everywhere and then there's all those newspaper clippings. Yeah. So that's the house that Tucker bought for a smoking deal. Now, now we're basically finding out why it was such a good deal because nobody wants it. Right. Because of the tragedies that had happened there uh, years All prior. All the bone furniture that's still inside it. Hey, it's that furniture looks nice, though. Like, Eddie Gaines' uh, <laughs> furniture. So, so all the college kids are gearing up outside. They're getting ready to make this first attack in, right? And right. they start talking to each other. And the stoner kid's like, you know, I, I'll go. maybe I'll go in there and see what's going on. And then Chad... <laughs> I think Chad makes him play rock, paper, scissors and the stoner kid ends up losing. And then the stoner kid's like, I don't know, man. So Chad goes, shut up and walk, bitch. And then puffs his inhaler. (laughs) Like, really? (laughs) You're going to call, I'm sorry, but you're going to call someone out like that. And and you're puffing your inhaler. Like you're relying on if, I mean, as a viewer, you know, he's been relying on this inhaler basically the entire day. We've seen him smoke a joint and then puff the inhaler right after. Oh, man, this guy, like, I just can't believe he's calling out his friend 
like that, and then hitting his inhaler. Well, right they afterwards. they use the inhaler on him later, so it was oh, it's it, great. Yeah, glad they always showed him with it. Oh, totally. It's a setup for sure. I just, I mean, if you're so reliant on your inhaler, why are you calling your friend such a bitch? Like that just seems like, it's just it's I don't know contradictory to me. Um, that kid will outrun you, and he's a stoner. So, I I just want to briefly talk about the kills. Speaking of outrunning somebody, um, the bees, the bee the, scene. Yeah, that yes. was like that moment that you're talking about when he was puffing up the inhaler. That's the first kill. Yeah, and like. Dude, I freaking love this one. Like, Tucker, he's chainsawing, and he chainsaws into a beehive in the middle of a dead, like, a dead tree. Yeah, he's and, just uh, out chopping wood. And he's, like, he's he's got all the bees singing him, so he's running with the chainsaw, and so the stoner kid sees him and starts running for his life. And he, ru- he just runs right into a tree. I, I, that was, um, I had actually forgotten about that death uh until that moment and then i was like oh yeah i forgot about this this is this is a good one (laughs) the self-impalement no there are two self-impalements in this movie yes two and i think this one isn't as good as the other one (laughs) this one's funny the other one's the best like for sure i i completely agree so so that scene it's like i don't know if they meant to homage but Tucker is basically flailing this chainsaw around like he's Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And he's just swinging it around, trying to kill the bees with the chainsaw. Oh, man, it's so you know, good. It's so funny. But yeah, I think so. He's just in so much pain that he's just running around. Well, there's that slow mo moment when they're running side by side. And oh, the movie yeah. Just he's like, looking at him. He's kind of like, what is this guy doing yeah. next to me? And he's it's... having this realization. And the college kid takes his eyes off of everything, and then that's when the impalement happens. Bam! Spiked right to and his And then gut. when the bee lands on him, I think that was a sign to us, the audience, as like, oh, the guy realized that he was running from bees, and he just killed himself. I'm so glad you picked up on that. I felt the same way. I felt like that was the director letting us know as a viewer that the college kid realized Tucker wasn't after him. He was running from bees. Yeah. But the, the whole... The whole part of the movie is like maybe it's just a misunderstanding maybe it's just misunderstanding yeah. that mitch was his name because it said so on his shirt <laughs> that poor kid all right so so all that stuff happens but like i think the next kill that we need to talk about is the wood chipper scene oh god the kid just jumps right in front right of the wood chipper because he was planning on pushing Tucker into the wood chipper, right? Like, that's what makes sense to me. Yeah, he ran at him. Okay. Okay. Mm. I just I just kind of wanted to make sure, like, in my head, that's the same. Like, he, he was planning on pushing Tucker into the wood chipper to kill him. Instead, Tucker had just moved at the right time to pick up the next log to put into the wood chipper, and the college kid just goes flying perfectly, head first, even fingers first, probably right into the wood chipper yeah. and just gets torn up. Um, and Tucker's trying to save him. So he, like, he grabs right. his feet and he's pulling back against the machine, ends up breaking the machine and gets it stuck. But he's just smattered in blood yeah. and bits. To, to be fair, like uh, this, everybody, everything in this movie is the college kid's fault. To be fair. Yeah. Most definitely. I, I mean, I don't think... I don't think you blame Tucker and Dale really for anything other than being in the wrong place at the, Tuck, at the wrong time. Tucker having his, his dick out. I mean, if Tucker didn't have his dick out, the whole thing would have never happened. I'm just saying. <laughs> Dale would have never had to have that conflict of uh, of heart. It was all Tucker's fault. And, and we know, Tucker blames Dale for it, man. He blames Dale for it. He does. I feel I feel like he fails as a friend several times in the movie. To be honest but that's the redeeming like, quality of dale that's what makes dale so much better throughout this movie Dale is uh dale is just a sweetheart let's just be honest and and he he deservedly gets the girl like he's just a heart of gold but let's be honest about tucker he 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 honestly you know portrays his feelings because when he comes back inside the hatch after getting all the bee stings and you know he's like how about because you know he's dale's taking care of Allie, the uh 
their new friend who they've nursed back to health. And he's like, uh, you know what, I'm sorry I wasn't out there to help you. Uh, I'll pull out the stingers and I'll help you for the rest of the day. And Tucker goes, I'd like that, you know, very, very much. All heartfelt and warm. And I was like, you know, that's a good resolution of a conflict right there. This is a real bromance. They've been together for a while. Yeah. You could you could really feel that their friendship was real and genuine. Um, I and that Tucker, Tucker looks out in, for him. Bromances in films. Um, how would you rate this? Um, it's right up there with Jason Siegel and Paul Rudd and I love you, man. It's right up. There. Oh man. You're, you're, you're putting, you're putting it up there pretty, pretty high. high. Yep. That's pretty high. I mean, these two, they're ride or die, buddy. They're, they're in it to win it together. What other catchphrases could I use right now? Uh, slap it a base. My ride or die, bitch. <laughs> 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 bitch better have my Hello. money. Um, I don't know. Now we're just spiraling on different. No, we're good. We're good, man. I feel like talking about the bromance is one of the most important parts of the film because they nail it. They nail this bromance. Like, if you want to watch a bromance film, I would say this is this is one. I really mean, consider. you put these two minds together, they could do anything. They could do anything. You've got one guy who never forgets anything he hears or sees, and you got another guy who's just good at talking. You know, he's actually well versed. Yeah, he's got the charisma. And I think that makes their bromance that much stronger because they're the yin and yang to each other. They are the perfect pieces for each other. Yeah. Um, it blows my mind how quickly they piece together what's going on with these college kids. Because from their perspective, they're instantly like, it's a suicide pact. These kids must be just coming up here to kill themselves. And <laughs> it's the only believable excuse, right? I mean, I agree. I understand from a different perspective because I've seen what the college kids are plotting. But at the same time, if you cut that part out of the movie, I would think that that's the only logical explanation, right? Yeah. I, I, I just... I'm very disappointed in all of these college students. So disappointed. What would you think of the callback for the, uh, the nail plank? Because we saw it, we've seen it what twice in the movie. Once when they first come in, where they touch the pillar and the, you know, and then he mentions it when she almost leans on it. Yeah, he says, "Don't touch that; it's finicky." And then then the the police officer, you know, it's coming as soon as the police officer starts walking back towards it. Um, And if you're paying attention, this movie when he's like leaning back towards it, you're like, "Oh no, 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 no!" And even Tucker and Dale are about to to stop him when the police officer kind of pushes it down and smack in the head. Yeah, that officer, so, oh man. You know, I'm, I, it's actually kind of a good thing he died. If you're rooting for Tucker and Dale, it definitely solved his problem. Like, what's up? It definitely solved their problem for sure. Well, he he believed them, but at the same time, he's like, you know what? Even if they believe it, you're thinking about two counts of ma- accidental manslaughter because they're trying to hide the bodies and everything. So, I don't know, man. That's know. a good thing, but. That scene then gives us one of my favorite gunfights in any movie ever, the nail gun fight. <laughs> oh, when they're shooting, he's like threatening to shoot his dog. Yeah. Oh, Dude, this. No, oh, I'm, on, I'm on Dale's side at that point. 100% all Dale all the time. Even if they're trying to hide the bodies, man. Got a nail gun fight. Dale's a giver, okay? He's, he's a giver. That's what it says on his you hat. You kill my dog, I'll be mad. He's going to give you a nail to the head. Once again, Tucker screws up. This is, I mean, this is where I really felt like Tucker was making poor decisions because he tried to do the whole sneaky snake thing and rescue the dog. And what's he end up doing? He just gets himself caught and uh, inevitably gets his fingers cut off. Like, the heck are you doing, Tucker? (sighs) No, those those kids, uh, they, they cut the golden goose. So... A little bit later, we have the tea tea party scene. Um, not to jump around too much, but we're trying to do better at just talking about our favorite parts of the movie, which is way more fun, um, I think, as well. And the tea party scene was a lot of fun to me because you've got Dale being so proper. <laughs> and you've got Chad the douche, or, Mr. Proper, being a complete asshole. 
Well, he tells this story about why he, he hates hillbillies, and that's where we get his backstory. And he's this guy's is just a friggin' elitist. Uh, for the audience, who you may not, we didn't really do a great job introducing him besides calling him a douche. Douche, but he he hits on the main the heroine of the story in such ways like, oh, I know you think you're better than everyone, and she's like, no, I don't. And he's like, it's okay. You are better than everyone else. You are better than them. And he like hints at how he's better as well. It's just really creepy, man. A creepy, weird douche. Yep, I agree. He uh, he alludes that his father was killed by uh, the rednecks after they tortured his mom, and his mom got away. She was pregnant. Uh, with Chad at the time and then she ended up getting sent away to a psych ward um, just from the trauma that she had so Chad was raised um, by another family or whatever they don't really go into a lot of detail there um, but yeah it's like I don't know man I that that part of the story didn't make a whole lot of sense when he was explaining it I'm like there's got to be a missing piece you know and then, and then we get that missing piece later on, which was quite nice. I agree. That that tea party was good, though. It, it was, was. And then they they raid. The teenagers decide, or college students, I guess. Sorry, they raid. Decide to raid. They're like you said, they're not out in this amount of time. Come out and come out shooting. Oh, yeah, gun Jason blazing or whatever. J Jason with up, the big like, boob blonde. He ends up shooting his friend. Well, doesn't Jason the shotgun? But Jason chops up that one chick with the like weed whacker blade thing. I don't know what that tool was, but he like chops up the one chick's face with it, going after Dale, yeah. but he misses. Yeah, and then, and then he ends up shooting his buddy. Chad does. Yep. It's just like Good I face. said, it's a series of of misfortunate events, like. No. Jason wasn't Jason uh, wasn't trying to kill the girl, right? But Dale moved out of the way, so he ends up killing the girl. Misfortune. Um, it's, it's the kids' fault, one hundred percent their fault. I'm just blaming all of them. It's all their fault. I don't, None of this would have happened if it weren't for them. I don't disagree. Uh, even even if Tucker like wasn't there, it wouldn't have mattered. Still blame the kids. Yeah. And that guy still probably would have gone crazy and killed her. Part of his friends in the woods. I mean, the good so. news is Allison, Tucker, and Dale all escape the cabin right before it blows up. And that's the end of the movie, yeah. right? Nothing nothing bad could happen after that. Dude, when uh when Chloe dies, that was uh she's like she puts up lights up the cigarette and she's just right next to the gas tanks and she's just she's just like, Yeah, I'm gonna die, whatever. She's so she just that, gave up. Yeah, well, she I think she realized there was no good ending for her Final Destination style. It was just, it was inevitable. Fate. There you she go. She made one too many mistakes. No, oh, man. I, let's just talk about the ending, though, because I know we're going to jump ahead here, but, and we can always move back. But I really, really want to talk about, like, so at the very end, Dale's going bowling with uh, Tucker. Tucker gets new fingers, don't worry. Um, <laughs> but Dale's bowling with uh, Alice Allie and uh, he tells the, the the other guy he's like if you want something you just go for it and the guy's like we see him like punching and attacking a woman and a guy and she's like do you want to help him he's like no and they just make out what's your opinion on that I I don't understand. I don't know what they were trying to why do is, there. I don't get it. Why is he why is he assaulting a female? Like I don't get it. Yeah. I get why Dale would want to stay out, I guess, cuz he doesn't want to ruin the good thing he has going, I guess. But at the same time, nobody know. in that bowling alley is stopping uh anyone from doing anything. Yeah. I was weirded out. It's like that critters bowling scene where the crites, poof, they're just blowing everything up for no reason. This guy yeah. sitting in the bowling alley. It was just beating on I get a woman. They were and trying no to be funny, anything. but it was just kind of it's not a little funny. jarring. Yeah, wasn't funny. Not funny Other at than all. That, 
Yeah. So there's a bunch of um, escape, not escape. We get a little bit more information about Chad. So I guess we could just run through that real quick too, just to kind of round it out. Um, yeah. How? Yeah. Let's talk about Chad. Let's talk about the very first part of the film and how it ties in with this part. Yeah. As well. Oh yeah, we'll do. That'll be our final. That'll be the final piece. We'll we'll end the episode with that because I think that's probably a really nice. I think that was a really nice uh, job writing. Um, yeah, for sure. So after the cabin blows up, so Allison, Tucker, and Dale, they all got out of the cabin. The cabin blew up. And then Chad somehow emerges from the ashes, burnt, half burnt, looking like Two-Face out of Dark Knight. Angry as F. Ready to kill. So the trio jumps into... Ready to make out. <laughs> so Tucker... <laughs> oh, that was so gross, dude. Uh, so the trio jumps into Tucker's truck, and then Dale drives it right into a tree. And... Uh, and nobody escapes. Instead, Allison gets kidnapped again. And Chad beat up Tucker. I don't even know what his wound really was. It was maybe a stomach wound. It's hard to tell by the way the scene was shot. But anyways, we get fast forward a little bit. We are at a lumber yard now where Chad has tied up Allison to a saw table. Like you see mm -hmm. in many other movies. And uh, basically... What's going to happen here? Um, Chad kisses her with his burnt face. I think that's what you were referencing. And his Clark. tongue's all poking out and everything. It's gross. He's it's a pretty, bad kisser. Like 100%. Hard. One of the worst kissers I've ever seen in my life. Like, I don't know. Just appreciate what you have. Please appreciate what you have. But anyways, Dale you shows get, up to you be... You get a Chad. <laughs> you might get a Chad. Um... Dale shows up to be the hero and does some pretty magnificent things. And then upstairs makes, this is the callback to the inhaler. So you find out yeah. that Chad's actually allergic to chamomile. It'll mess with his asthma. So Dale finds right. a box of chamomile tea bags and, well, he must have cut them all up beforehand and got them into his hand, I guess, and then throws it at right. him. And the chamomile tea dust spreads all over Chad, who has an allergic reaction his asthma kicks in he falls out of a window and then uh yeah goes splat on the ground and uh that's no, was, uh, that's really the end of <laughs> the end of chad the, for... they they don't find the body by the way they don't find it yeah and uh the news reporter is there and she's talking about it and she's like let's go inside which this is kind of a form of i, I think it's pulp fiction they refer to a point that happened earlier in the movie which is the very start, you, there's a kid with a half-burnt face who kills the, the reporter and a guy with a camera. So the film's not over yet. Correct. Or there's potential for a sequel. Who knows? Yeah, I think they left it open on purpose, which is nice. But yeah, it, yeah. it basically wraps back around and ends at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. This is kind of one of those movies, like, if you watch it again for a second time, you go, oh, yeah. Oh, that makes sense now. Unless it's been years in between your watches like it was for me, and I had completely forgotten about that. Yeah, I kind of sort of did, but I remember that one of the people in the group was fucked up. But yeah. Curtis, would you recommend this movie? I would, for sure. I think it's a lot of mm -hmm. fun. Um, you know, I think it's a good movie. Well, let's, let's without further ado, do. I agree with you. I love this movie. It's fun to watch. Um, if somebody wants to watch something that's not too scary, but kind of has horror elements, I can recommend this if they're fine with a little bit of gore. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, good movie. Welcome Would you place. say it's time for it fun facts yeah. and... Trivia? Trivia. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's get in. I want to I hear what you have dug up from the earth for us so there's really um, there's really not a lot uh to dig up for this movie it's pretty i don't know it's pretty normal i made a joke about final destination um we had two people uh in this movie who actually appeared in final destination 3 jesse moss and uh chalen simmons jesse moss i believe is uh jason's character um and and yeah so i thought that that was kind of fun because this has a very um 
the deaths seem very similar to a lot of like final destination deaths just the way it's it's fate you don't have control over it so i i i would like to see if someone did like a fan film type thing it'd be cool to see a final destination bleed over into tucker and dale versus evil because it's like they don't have any choice of what's happening this stuff is just these kids are dumb and everything's happening it'd be it'd be really cool um so you had mentioned you would love to see a cut just from the college kids perspective right yeah so there's a I'd special like feature like... on the dvd well, we see... what's that there's a special feature on the dvd that plays the movie from the college kids perspective in which tucker and dale are murderous villains yeah i want to see it yeah so i think we're gonna have to see if youtube might have that cut uh somewhere uh... i know i know a lot of these um websites nowadays that are out there there's you know a bunch of bad bootleg ones but sometimes um you'll get makers of films who now put their movies out there for you to watch because some of them don't care they're okay with it so if there's a legit copy out there and clark wants to watch it we'll watch it um together and have a fun time if it's some you know stolen copy of it or whatever we will avoid it for sure um let's see other than that, the film, the, the cool thing was that this film was shelved for over three years before it finally got a release. So I think this definitely was like a labor of love um, for our directors and writer or uh, director and writers. And it's just good to see that he finally got it out. You know what I mean? It's nice. Yeah. But yeah other than that, I didn't really see anything fun um, or too, too uh, fun facty in trivia. There's no like crazy hey, we did this, or, you know, hey, this person had a cool, um, I don't know, moment in the film. Nothing nothing crazy. Anything from your perspective? No, I just love the movie. I think it's, uh, it's aged very well. I feel like it will continue to age well. This is one of those movies that just, it's something worth watching, even if you don't like horror movies. As long as you're okay with the couple of boobies and a couple of f-bombs and some blood and gore you're good to go heck yeah i'm right there with you man i agree 100 yeah. percent. so with uh with everything going on lately curtis uh, what have, what have you been up to lately anything you've read or watched um so i mean i got animal crossing when it came out um you know just being kind of stuck at home all day every day um it's a nice break from real life and then doing fake life stuff in Animal Crossing. Um, I have some friends who have it, so we travel to each other's islands and hang out virtually, uh, which is kind of nice, cool. especially in our current state and what's going on. Anything you've been up to or yeah. doing? Yeah, I just want to say here Animal Crossing is a very relaxing game. It's very addicting. A lot of people seem to love it, so it's good, man. I went on the opposite the same game or a game that released the same day, Doom Eternal. Um, I have started that. I streamed the first two levels a little while ago. Probably, probably won't stream. I'll probably play it only on stream, so that way I kind of force myself to be a little bit more open to public speaking. But otherwise, no, it's it's a lot of fun. High octane, get, die pretty fast. Uh, really really challenging compared to the previous one i feel like this one has a lot more skill involved so i'm i'm all in i love it sweet yeah i um i was excited to see that you decided to start streaming um and i don't know i thought i thought you did a great job so i look forward to your next stream you didn't even watch <laughs> that's not true i was there i saw i saw things you had to do some weird double jump push thing i just couldn't listen that's the thing i was hanging out with the kiddo and the wife but at your next stream i'll be prepared right cool well that's gonna do it for this episode of two guys and some horror uh once again we talked about tucker and dale versus evil it was fun you get four thumbs up from clark and curtis and uh yeah i think it's also one of those nice entry-level horror films as well with a little less horror a little bit more comedy it's kind of it's kind of an easygoing one um but what i'd like to do now is just plug our social media one time real quick the number two guys horror pod 
on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, go ahead and give us a follow, hang out with us, talk with us, chat with us. Um, I've been doing a lot of live tweets as I watch things just because I am stuck inside so much. Um, even while I'm working, I can still do live tweets. Uh, so that's nice. And, uh, and yeah, I look forward to, uh, to what you guys have to say about this episode. Yeah. Uh, check it out. Also just make sure to, uh, send an email just telling them how, how pretty you think Curtis would be in a pink ruffled dress. <laughs> uh, if we get, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to make this up off the top of my head, but Curtis will do it. If you get like five, five, 5,000 likes, uh, subscribes, bell hits on, a, on this YouTube video. Uh, this is a podcast that won't be on YouTube. But um, he'll wear a dress. I don't know, dude. I'm, I'm, I got nothing, like absolutely nothing. I am. Out. Thank you guys so much for listening to us. Uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> All right, you take care. That was so bad. Uh... <laughs>